proven recently, ladies and gentlemen, that one of the best medicines for any ailment is laughter. You all hear that? Yeah. yeah. But for that medicine to kick in and make you feel good, you've got to LOL. Now, the young guys here know what LOL is, but some of the more senior ladies, you know, laugh out loud. Because if you don't laugh out loud, it's a wee bit like you there, sir, you know, because you bottle it up and it causes gas. <laughs> And there's three rows behind you that have got very nervous looking. <laughs> I'm a wee bit concerned because in our little village here, we had a bit of an incident today, ladies and gentlemen, we had. And it's a very embarrassing incident, especially for us gentlemen. Because there was a fellow walking down the main street this morning and he made the cardinal sin of all sins for us men. He forgot to zip up. <clears throat> And he met one of the local ladies who had been out doing her shopping and lifting her pension and everything else. And she was very concerned when she seen what was happening and she wondered how she could help him out. So she says, excuse me, sir, do you realize that you've left the garage door open? <laughs> and without batting an eyelid, he turned around and he says, oh, is it? He says, did you look in and see the Range Rover? <laughs> She says, no, but I had a little peep and I saw a mini with two flat tires. <laughs> now, yeah. oh. Unbelievable, I tell you. I was going out on the first flight to London on Monday morning. And I went in for a little snack, you know, just to set me up because I'd need nourishment, as I say. Look at that. And I went up to the counter, it was half six, and I said to the wee girl behind the counter, I said, I would like a ham sandwich, a cup of tea, and a bar of Kit Kat. She said, it's all right. <laughs> and I suddenly realised I had no small change, only a £20 note. So me being a gentleman, I thought I would help her out, and I was going to warn her. I said, excuse me, Pat. I said, I only got a £20 note. She says, that's all right. You can leave the Kit Kat back. <laughs> The present Mrs. Wilson and I, we paid a visit recently out abroad to Spain. And whenever we are out there, we like to sample, you know, the real Spanish culture. You know, there's no point in going out to Spain and eating McDonald's sort of thing. You know, like you have to go down. So we wandered down into deepest one of these little villages and we walked into one of these bars and I walked up to the bar and I said, Hey, Manuel. He says, Senor. He didn't know I could speak Spanish, like, neither did I. I says, Manuel. He says, Senor. I says, we'll have two glasses of vino tinto. So he set them up, and just as he set them up, I felt something brush against my bum. And I said to the present Mrs. Wilson, I says, did you feel that? She says, say nothing. Say nothing, she says. We want to get out of here alive. So I was standing patiently sipping my wine, and the same thing happened again. Whew. And I said, I'm going to have to mention it. She says, don't. I says, Manuel. I said, what sort of a bar is this? He says, senor, what do you mean? I said, there's someone after feeling me on the derriere, or London derriere, whichever way you fancy. <laughs> oh, he says, senor. He says, this is a tapas bar. <laughs> and... Keep up, keep up. But I said to the present Mrs. Wilson on Valentine's night this year, I said, darling, I said, where would you like to go? She said, somewhere expensive. So I put her in the car and I took her down the road to the petrol station. And <laughs> wasn't what she had in mind. We come back home and I said, Pat, you were very cross tonight. I've never seen that side of you. She says, I'm often cross. But I said, I don't notice it, no because I get it out of my system, she says, without you seeing. I said, what do you do to get it out of your system? She says, every time that you annoy me, she says, I go and clean the toilet. <laughs> I said, what good does that do you? She says, I use your toothbrush. And now... <laughs> well, there was this wee girl and she had a schnauzer. But my wee friend's schnauzer wasn't well. Oh. 
And I mean, any of you dog lovers know you worry about them like children. So she went down to the vet to see about her wee Sammy the schnauzer. And she says to the vet, look, she says, there's something wrong. I call him in for his dinner and everything, and he won't come. The vet says, well, have a wee look. So he had a look in his ears, and he says, there's the problem. He says, he says, his hair growing in his ears, it can't hear anything. Well, she says, sort it out. She says, vet says, no. Vet says, you can sort that out yourself. She says, how? Vet says, go down to your local chemist and get a tube of Imac hair removal cream. <laughs> You've been there, madam. <laughs> She says, what? At the, she says, go down and ask in the chemist and they'll give it to you. So down she went and she said to the wee girl in boots, she says, she says, I need a tube of this stuff, Imac hair removal cream. The chemist says, no problem. She says, £2.49. P. She says, madam, have you used this stuff before? She says, no. She says, could you advise me? Oh, the chemist says, yes, madam. She says, very simple. She says, if you're using it on your legs, she says, don't use any body lotion for a day or two. She says, it's not for my legs. Well, the chemist says, if you're using it under your arms, you know, don't put on any deodorant for a day or two, because it'll be very sore. She says, it's not for under my arms. <laughs> chemist says, madam, she says, do you mind me asking? She says, she says, where are you going to use it? Oh, she says, it's for me schnauzer. <laughs> well, the chemist says, in that case, stay off your bicycle for a fortnight. Um, now... <laughs> Oh, and you know, marriage is grand. <laughs> Divorce is forty grand. You know. But... Are you okay, that Dennis? I'm fine. Yes. It's very good. Come on over this way beside me. Okay. No. 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 <laughs> now, could you take your hands out of your pocket? Yes. It's very nice. Uh, hello. <laughs> Are you enjoying the evening? Oh, it's fantastic! <laughs> what do you think of the comedian? Bloody helpless! <laughs> Belfast Zoo had a problem because they had to get rid of all of the animals. So these three old bachelor brothers that lived down here said, we'll take an animal, we'll take the monkey. So they brought this monkey home. And the monkey was brought up as one of their own. People said even they thought the monkey could speak. It was that human-like with the rest of them. One day tragedy struck. The three brothers were killed dead in a car crash. And the police were called out. And the big sergeant was standing there and he says, this is terrible. Not a witness to this terrible crash, he says. And just with that, there was a rustle up in the bushes. Now what rustle was doing in the bushes, I don't know. But constable with the sergeant says, look, Sarge, he says, it's the monkey. The sergeant says, the monkey? He says, yes. He says, these three boys had this monkey for the last 20 years, and they reared him like their own child. What do you mean? He says, the monkey can talk. The sergeant says, get yourself on. The constable says, get him down. So they threw a few bananas up, and the monkey... <laughs> and the sergeant says, come down, and the monkey says... <laughs> The sergeant says, yes, come down here. So they got him down and his mo- the sergeant says, he says, monkey, he says, this is very, very sad. <laughs> he says, he says, would you like to come down to the station, he says, and try and help us with our investigation? What happened to the accident? <laughs> so they, they got him back into the police car, down to the station, into the interview room. Two cups of coffee and four bananas. And the sergeant, and the wee constable taking the notes. Sergeant says, now, Mucky, says, we want you to think back to the time of the accident. <laughs> he says, he says, what was the first brother, John, doing? He says, whenever the car crashed. The monkey says, <laughs> the sergeant says, drinking. <laughs> Write that down. The constable wrote this down. He says, he says, right, he says, he says, the second brother, he says, Joe, he says, what was Joe doing? He says, whenever the car crashed, the monkey says, he says, smoking, he says, write that down, constable wrote that in the book, he says, now monkey, he says, the third brother, he says, he says, what was he doing? He says, whenever the car crashed, the monkey says, he says, Texan, 
He says, terrible, terrible. He says, drinking, smoking, and texting. He says, constable, have you got all that? Constable says, I have. He says, monkey. He says, says, tell me this. He says, what were you doing whenever the car crashed? The monkey says, (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah, my yeah, hey. Ah.